What is the ruling on saying Jesus when one is astonished or amazed or startled as the Christians do? Questioner says, what is the ruling on saying Jesus? Does it come under the heading of shirk if one says it by way of astonishment or amazement, as the non-Arab Christians do in movies and the like? One of my long-term acquaintances said it, and I want to talk to him about it, but I can't find any fatwa on this matter. Answer. Praise be to Allah. It is not permissible for a Muslim to say Jesus when he is astonished or amazed or startled, as the Christians do, because what they mean when they say it is, Oh my God, because they believe that Jesus, alayhi salam, is God, but Jesus is not God. Rather, he is the slave and messenger of Allah. Whoever believes that Isa is in any way divine is a disbeliever. This expression involves two infractions of Islamic teachings. Firstly, it involves imitation of the disbeliever, which is haram. Because the Prophet wasallam said, whoever imitates a people is one of them. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, at the very least, this hadith indicates that it is haram to imitate them. Although the apparent meaning indicates that the one who imitates them becomes a disbeliever, as in the verse, and whoever is an ally to them among you, then indeed he is one of them. End quote. Secondly, mentioning the name Isa at times of hardship or panic comes under the heading of calling upon him in supplication and seeking his help, which is associating with him Allah. Jalla Jalaluhu. Allah Azza wa Jal says, And do not invoke besides Allah that which neither benefits nor harms you. Nor, for if you did, then indeed you would be of the wrongdoers. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari rahimahullah said in his tafsir, Then indeed you would be of the wrongdoers means you would be among those who associate others with Allah and wrong themselves. End quote. And Allah Azza wa Jal says the English rendition being, And whoever invokes besides Allah another deity for which he has no proof, then his account is only with his Lord. Indeed, the disbelievers will not succeed. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it is mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu said, Whoever dies calling upon any rival besides Allah will enter hell. So Allah azza wa jal forbade the Sahaba to say to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ra'ina, consider us, even though they intended a sound meaning when saying it. That was because the Jews would say it intending an abhorrent meaning. So Allah Azza wa Jal forbade them to resemble the Jews in their wording. Even though their intentions were different, Allah Azza wa Jal said, O you who believe, say not ra'ina, but say unzurna, wait for us and listen. And for the believers, and for the disbelievers is a painful punishment. As Sa'di rahimahullah says in his tafsir, when the Muslims addressed the messenger as he was teaching them about their religion, they would say ra'ina. Meaning, pay attention to us, giving the word an acceptable meaning. The Jews, however, gave the same word an offensive meaning. They took advantage of this opportunity to address the messenger with this word, intending the offensive meaning. So Allah told the believers not to use this word, so as to put a stop to this problem. This shows us that something permissible may be disallowed if it becomes a means that leads to something haram. It also shows us that we should adopt good manners and use words that can only be interpreted in a good way. We should also avoid foul speech and offensive words. All words are ambiguous and may be interpreted in an appropriate manner. So Allah instructed them to use words that could only be interpreted in a good way as He said. Rather say, unzurna. For this word is sufficient to convey the desired meaning without reservations. End quote, and Allah knows best.